The second experiment is a relatively recent one, again from the early 1960s, and was conducted at Harvard and demonstrates that nothing can go faster than the speed of light. This experiment was conducted with an electron accelerator, an accelerator of electrons which used voltages to accelerate electrons up to some kinetic energy. The source of electrons is right here. It's referred to it as electron gun. In the experiment, it's this box. Following the box is a series of equipotential planes. Notice them right here. Each of these planes is at a successively higher and higher voltage. As a result, the electrons are accelerated and they acquire a kinetic energy. After being accelerated up to that speed and that kinetic energy, the electrons are timed at two successive intervals. At one location, the electrons pass through a small metal tube. Because the electrons have a charge and the tube is a conductor, an image charge is created in the tube and creates an electrical pulse. So this tube signals the start of the electron's path down the experiment. Since the beam of electrons comes in a pulse, then the electrical uh, pulse coming down this cable will also be in the form of a pulse. It'll be a short duration burst. So the first signal for the electron's arrival into the experiment comes from this cable. The electron then travels approximately 8.4 meters down a long drift space until they stop in this block right here. When they hit this block, this block is made of aluminum, the electrons are brought to rest. That's because they interact with the, the electrons and the atoms of, the, of aluminum and through those collisions lose all of their energy. The arrival of this electron pulse into this block of aluminum creates a charge on the aluminum block and this creates another electrical impulse which goes down another wire. These two electrical impulses, the one from the beginning of the experiment and the one from the end, arrive at an oscilloscope. And the oscilloscope records the time difference between these two pulses. From the time difference, delta t, and the distance traveled, delta x, then the velocity of the electrons can be inferred, delta x over delta t. It's also possible to learn experimentally what is the kinetic energy of the electrons. One expects that the kinetic energy gained by the electrons is equal to the electron charge times the voltage which, through which they were accelerated. However, if one wants a more direct confirmation of the kinetic energy of the electrons, one can look at this aluminum disk located at the end of the experiment. This aluminum disk goes, sees a temperature rise due to the loss of kinetic energy of the electrons. that kinetic energy lost will go into the form of heat in the, in the aluminum block. As a result of that heat, delta Q, there should be a temperature rise. The, the heat rise is equal to the mass of the aluminum block times its specific heat times the delta temperature. Therefore, all the experimenters had to do was measure the temperature rise in this aluminum block, and that gave a measurement of the heat rise, which is a, then a direct measurement of the kinetic energy. Here are some graphs of the time, time difference between 
the time of entrance of the electron beam in the experiment and its, and its exit. So here's the first, the first pulse from the electron beam as it passes through that metal tube. Here's the second pulse from that electron beam as it hits the aluminum disc. The time difference here shows how long it took for the electron beam to pass through the experiment. In this particular picture, the kinetic energy of the electron, which is the electron charge times the voltage through which it is accelerated, is 0.5 millions of electron volts. The second picture corresponds to the case when the electron beam was accelerated through 1 million volts, so its kinetic energy per electron should be 1.0 mega electron volts. And again, the time difference between these two pulses is recorded. Notice that the time difference looks to be approximately the same as it was for the 0.5 million case. The third picture is the case when the kinetic energy was raised to 1.5 million electron volts. And here is 4.5, and here is 15 million electron volts. If the experimenters graphed the speed of the electron beam as recorded from the time difference of those previous page, on the previous page, divided by C and actually squared it. That's what's graphed on the vertical axis. On the horizontal axis is the kinetic energy, K, measured for the electrons from the heat rise in the aluminum block. As they increase the voltage on the accelerating grid, then this kinetic energy rose to many, many more times uh, the electron mass. For a classical theory, one expects the kinetic energy to be one half mv squared, or one half mc squared v over c squared. That's this line right here. In other words, the more kinetic energy you give the electrons, the greater the speed that should be obtained. But it doesn't take much more than a, a million electron volts, and already the electron beam would be going greater than the speed of C. In fact, what's observed in the experimenter's data is that all the data points get closer and closer to the speed of C, but never exceed it. And the experiment demonstrates that the speed of light is an absolute maximum for, the, for the, all the electrons that they try to shoot through the experiment. This cannot be explained from Newtonian mechanics and requires the relativity theory from Einstein, as we'll see.